guys are focusing on the plant. There we go. Guys, welcome back to Baking with Miles. It has been, it has been a hot minute since we've done one of these. This also isn't a planned video. Um, I was just in the mood for making some... I don't even know what I'm making. I was just in the mood for making some very decadent, fudgy, gooey, healthy, high-protein, sweet potato brownies. And I also felt like talking and ranting at the same time. So I thought, do you know what? Do you know what, yeah, let's just film it and bring back Baking with Miles. So, I think it was Deliciously Ella who started the whole sweet potato brownie craze, phase, um, madness, um, brilliantness, you know, geniusness, all of those years ago. Um, but I will say that my recipe, which is kind of a spin on her recipe, um, is a lot better. And by a lot better, I mean, I've never made these before but they are going to be a lot better. This is actually a very easy recipe to make because once you have all of your ingredients ready, you do have to boil the sweet potatoes, which is like actually the most hardest part, most hardest, the hardest part of this. Um, and then you have to grind your oats. But apart from that, everything is just blended up, put on a tray, put in the oven, apply to face with an iced coffee or a nice herbal tea or whatever you let me just remind you that however you're making the brownie, whether it's a healthy version, a non-healthy version, a vegan version, whatever, brownies are supposed to be gooey, fudgy, moist, and I can't have anything to do with people that make cakey, fluffy, brown squares of cake, and then have the audacity to call it a brownie. Like, there is definitely a place in hell for all of those people to do that. I mean, there's also a place in hell for all of my shenanigans, but I already know I'm going there. But for everyone else that makes cakey brownies, I'll see you there. Funny thing is, some of you people probably think that I actually know what I'm doing. <laughs> Just wanted to say as well, if my eyes get progressively more red um, as we bake, um, that would be because I'm also chopping up onions behind the camera where you can't see, um, so that would be why. I can't believe that's the best I came up with. Okay, so for this recipe, we need some oat flour. These are gluten-free brownies. So we're gonna grind up 100 grams of oats into oat flour. I've never made brownies with oat flour before. This is a first for me, even though this is obviously a very tried and tested recipe. Mmm, I was gonna say it smells like something, but it smells like porridge. I mean, surprisingly. So the sweetness from this, we focused, you know what, I can't even tell anymore. It's got to that point where I can't tell if I'm focused, so we're just gonna have to go with it. Every fucking time. Yeah, the sweetness in this recipe comes largely from, I mean, these are sweet potato brownies, so obviously from the sweet potatoes. Um, and I do believe I am going to add a bit of maple syrup as well, but the majority of the sweetness comes from these beautiful, squishy, medjool dates. So step number one, we're just going to blend the dates with the sweet potato. Then we just chuck everything else in, of which I'll show you in a minute. And then, then the fun begins. So I do already have my steamed, not steamed, boiled sweet potato ready. So look how prepared I am. So. So professional. While I'm pitting these dates, of which we need 12. Um, yeah, I'm just, you know what guys, I'm just, a bit, I'm just a bit fed up with people. I'm just fed up with people because I didn't realize, I, I mean, I knew there was stupid people in the world, obviously. Many, many a stupid person walking the street these days. I didn't realize how many stupid people there were until recently. And it just blows my mind that I'm the same species as certain people because Again, I just don't know where logic, critical thinking, intelligence, or anything like that went in 2021. I mean, guys, there's, there's people that still watch the news and believe it. It makes me lose faith in the human race. It just does. So 12 medjool dates. I find this so incredibly satisfying. But I just do because it's just like nature's caramel and I get really excited about it. I have completely forgotten how many I've put in. Hold on. One, two, three, four. I think we have six. All right, seven. Shit, there was half a pip sit on that one. I've actually lost count again. Eleven. 
Douze. Isn't that? Yeah, that is 12 in French. Woo, my mouth is dry. <laughs> All right, so in goes the sweet potato. This would also work with butternut squash. Um, again, I'm, I'm just guessing. I mean, I don't even know if this version is gonna work because I've never made it before, but I feel like you guys need to see me because you just can't see me right now. You can see me now. Yeah, it's not, when I say stupid people, I don't, I don't mean people that like don't do well in school or they're not good at maths or math. Math, as you would say in the States. I've literally lost communication with people recently that I used to be very close with even just because, you know how like two plus two is four? Um, like just equate that to an, a world event and they don't get it and I, I just can't, I just can't with these people anymore. Speaking of stupid people, there are a lot of stupid people on social media. Um, me being one of them. And do you know what bugs me the most is woke people. Oh my gosh. Woke people need to... I don't know, the definition of a woke person to me is just a dumb person. It's someone that any kind of stupid agenda that the mainstream media or idea is like trying to push. Um, and then like woke people kind of jump on the bandwagon on social media and just promote the fuck out of things They want validation and they want to be politically correct and they want to be like Yeah, let's call everyone out and be woke and it's just like I'm fed up with people being so damn sensitive in 2021 I'm fed up of woke people having a problem with everything in the whole world It will get to the point soon where I'm like hi, my name is Miles and I'm a male or like, hi, my name's Miles and I live in the UK. Like, soon that will be offensive to people. The things that people get offended by in 2021, it's just like, I honestly think that some people, they're, they're getting paid. They must be getting paid, but I don't know by who. I'm actually convinced that some people are just paid to be offended because, um, yeah. It does annoy me quite a lot. You know, they want to be politically correct. They want support from the masses, the masses of other stupid people. And they just don't look into things themselves. Like I, I love the fact that the world is full of diversity and people with different opinions. It does make the world exciting that so many people have different ideas or different perspectives on things and stuff like that. But it gets to a point where too much stupid is just too much stupid and I, can't deal right now. I just wish, like one wish for the world is that people would just start thinking for themselves. Like think for yourself, use your brain cells. Like God gave them to you for a reason. Um, I know some people don't have very many, but just just use the ones you have, please. Cause I, I can't take woke people anymore. The protein powder that I'm using for these brownies is the Ritual. It's not called Ritual anymore. Sorry, they changed the name. The protein powder I'm using for this recipe is the vegan protein from Vivo Life. I mean, all of their protein is vegan, but this is their simple range. It used to be called Ritual. I've shown you it before. And I'm using the dark chocolate flavor and it really is like a, like a really beautiful, rich, deep, chocolatey flavor. All right, we need some ground almonds. This makes it really nice and, well, almondy but also moist and fudgy and just what brownies are supposed to be like. The oat flour, pecan nuts are my absolute. Favorite. Oh my gosh. The question is how many went in the f fucking brownies? I don't even know. Okay, anyway, we're gonna put some pecans in here and and there's also pecans, pecans sprayed all over my kitchen right now. I have some 85% dark chocolate and I'm gonna just crumble this in. Look at this. Oh, I didn't crack because it's not cold. I wanted a crack, I love a good crack. I'm not gonna measure anything for the rest of the video because do you know what? Measuring takes a lot of time, I've realized. And I also don't trust my scales. So yeah. I mean, who knows? Big scoop of the dark chocolate protein powder. The smell of it is like, mm. Gonna put some baking powder in. Um, I would say I'm putting in about two teaspoons. I'm not sure why. I'm using some carob in place of cacao. It was actually Freely that got me onto carob. Not because I have anything against cacao, I don't. Just because of the caramel flavor, it's so fucking delicious. Um, 
I, I don't know how much I'm putting in, but this is the cashew butter I was telling you about. This is the one that tastes like white chocolate. It is just smooth and sensual and just, oh, absolutely impossible not to eat all in one go, is all I can say about it. Gonna put in some good, proper maple syrup. Don't be using agave. I can't believe people still think that's healthy. I mean, not that everything has to be healthy, but agave is just trash. Like actual trash. And this is the trick according to, again, I've adapted this from Deliciously Ella's recipe, to use the water from a can of chickpeas. Um, I have no idea why. Actually, do you know what? I think I do know why. It's because of the aquafaba. No, it is called aquafaba. And it helps to... I don't know what it helps to do. I've just seen people do it in baking. So yeah, the water of one can of chickpeas, which sounds very strange, considering this is the part that I would usually chuck in the bin. Like I would eat the chickpeas and get rid of this fluid. Alrighty, let's blend. Guys, this legit tastes like cookie dough, like better than cookie dough. Should I actually end the video right here? Because this, <laughs> this is actually what I wanted. Oh my God, that is good. Always the best part. I've chosen to put this in a small pan purely because I just want to eat the rest without it being cooked, like just like this, because it is absolutely incredible. You're probably thinking, oh, you're going to share those with Jill, aren't you, Miles? Absolutely fucking not. She doesn't even know I'm making these and by the time she gets home, she won't know anything about it because they're all going to be gone. Although I probably have like chocolate all over my face, like normally when I try and get away with such shenanigans. All right, into a hot oven for 35 to 40 minutes. And whilst they're in the oven, I really should clean the kitchen because it does look like a bomb's hit it. That's a sweet one too. Mm. They're gonna be ready in five minutes. I legit have not cleaned any of the dishes. <sighs> My mouth is so dry. I just realized I didn't time the brownies. I have no idea how long they've been in there. Fingers crossed. My eyes are so red. That is bright. Guys, I had to turn my lights on because it's pretty late and it's got dark. It's not pretty late, it's just getting dark early here at the moment. Anyway, the brownies are ready and they smell really good. And Jill has done an official, I was not, not taste test, but you know like squidge test because she knows about brownies and I don't. You know like when you push and then you see if it's ready and apparently they're ready. So if they're not good, then it's Jill's fault. Ooh, look at them brownies, guys. Editing Miles is gonna zoom in on that. Look at those brownies. Look at them, look at them, look at them. Look at that, look at that decadent brownie. It's like, per do you know what, I'm, I feel like I've become one of those cake people that does look a bit cakey. Like, come on Miles, that does look a bit cakey, but the question is, how does it taste? It is kind of gooey and moist, like exterior and interior. Cheers. Mm. <laughs> they really, really glue your mouth together. Like a lot. They're absolutely delicious. I'm not gonna lie, they are a bit cakey, but they taste good, they're sweet. And they're, they're dense, I'll give them that. They're very dense and gooey, and that's what I was after. And these are healthy and high protein, and yeah, I think I did pretty well. That's a pretty, pretty fucking respectable brownie, considering I really had no idea what I was doing. Very, very chewy. They taste like, a bit like, have you ever had malt loaf? Um, I'm very impressed with myself. I think you should all make these and give me a big fat thumbs up. And 
leave your suggestions down below of what you want me to make next time in Baking with Miles, which will probably be in 2024. Yeah, seriously guys, these brownies. Oh, that smell. Oh, that smell. Look at that gooey texture. It's just all about the texture. All about the texture. I mean the flavor too, but these bang. As this was an epic success, I will leave all the um, ingredients down below so you can replicate the same thing. Even though I didn't measure, I kind of know how much I put in, so I'll leave it all down below. And don't forget guys, this is actually highly nutritious. When I say breakfast brownies, like these can be for breakfast. I actually used to have them for breakfast. Really? Mm -hmm. Not with the protein powder though. Mm -hmm. Okay, I do wish I would have used cacao instead because it is a bit... My eyes are so red. Rouge. These are literally the best things I've ever made. Every time. Every time I say that. Every time I mean that.